Vladimir Lenin was in exile. World War I was raging and Russia was losing. People were starving, millions dying, and the military suffered under the incompetent leadership of Tsar Nicholas II. Revolution was inevitable. After the Bolshevik Revolution took control of Imperial Russia and Lenin took control of the Bolshevik Party, changes were made. But then after Lenin, there was a power struggle that would shape the world. Joseph Stalin was typical of most dictators, amoral, narcissistic, paranoid, and ruthless. His fear of subordinates becoming more popular than himself resulted in many being murdered or sent to the gulags along with their entire families. His primary opponent, Leon Trotsky, was a special case, and what occurred displayed the length Stalin would go to to remove anyone he considered a threat to his iron rule. Who was Leon Trotsky? Why did Stalin fear him? How did Stalin handle that situation? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, a veteran of the United States Army and Marine Corps, former history professor, book author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. Leon Trotsky was born in Yanovka as Lev Davidovich Bronstein. His father was a well-to-do Jewish farmer in the Ukrainian province of Kherson. He attended school in Odessa and was a standout student in all areas. Trotsky was arrested by Tsarist forces and sent to Siberia, where he escaped and made it to London in 1902 to join Lenin. During this time, he met with and spoke to many former soldiers who interested him as he was a dedicated student of military history. Now, Trotsky was a longtime Menshevik, a member of the minority party, and he returned to Russia and was well respected as a political thinker and tactically minded leader. He believed that conflict was required, but he also knew that conflict without educated leadership and well-trained soldiers was a fool's errand. While devoted to the idea of revolution, he was a critic of Lenin and the Bolshevik party due to parts of their platform, such as alienation from the outside world regarding economic progress and killing the aristocracy, which he disagreed with. However, after Lenin adopted many of his concepts, including expanding the revolution to other nations, he joined the Bolsheviks in August 1917, where he quickly rose to a position of power within the party. He and Lenin finally agreed on most of the Bolshevik platforms regarding expansion and the economic methods, and they both agreed on the total inclusion of all peoples, regardless of ethnicity, language, and social station in life. It was then that Trotsky was accepted by most in the Soviet Union as the natural successor to Lenin. The third man in line was Stalin, who was not cut from the same cloth as the other two men. This may be because Lenin and Trotsky were true intellectuals, well-educated and worldly, whereas Stalin had a minimal education and had never spent much time outside of his native Georgia and the Caucasus until he went to Russia, working as a criminal thug and early revolutionary. Just before the October Revolution, Trotsky was elected to the Bolshevik Central Committee, and during the revolution, he oversaw Soviet military operations in Petrograd, later renamed Leningrad, and today is known as St. Petersburg, its original name. Trotsky was instrumental in recruiting disaffected Russian officers and NCOs who were tired of the inept Tsar Nicholas directing the war and costing millions of lives. His effective messaging saw major revolts of soldiers against their officers, most from the nobility. Alexander Kerensky joined Trotsky when he urged the dissolution of the monarchy. He enthusiastically accepted the post of vice chairman of the Petrograd Soviet of Workers and Soldiers, Deputies, and Minister of Justice in the Provisional Government formed by the Duma. On November 13, 1917, the ousted Kerensky tried to retake Petrograd with loyal troops, but was defeated by Trotsky's forces at the Battle of Polkovo, and the Bolsheviks had control of Petrograd. Kerensky's failure against Trotsky was perceived as a great boost for Trotsky, and it marginalized Stalin, as Trotsky was the greatest hero of the Bolshevik Revolution, while Stalin was a sidelined paper pusher. Kerensky remained in hiding until May 1918, when he fled to Western Europe and wrote books on the revolution and was an editor emigre of newspapers and journals. 
In 1940, Kerensky relocated to the United States, where he lectured at universities and continued to write books on his revolutionary experiences, escaping Stalin's wrath. After the victory, Trotsky, who had disagreed with both Lenin and Stalin initially regarding isolationism versus global revolution, impressed Lenin, who, being an intellectual like Trotsky, both decided to merge their concepts on economics. Trotsky believed that a successful economy must have interaction beyond their own national boundaries in order to survive, let alone thrive. He believed that an isolated nation and economy would stagnate and eventually die. Lenin saw the logic. Stalin did not. Trotsky also believed that if communism was only successful in the Soviet Union, it would be an isolated pariah nation, which would also damage economic growth. Now, while Stalin believed that simply creating a communist state in the USSR would secure the nation and be self-sustaining, Trotsky believed in permanent revolution, expanding the ideology globally, building a like-minded coalition which started in China. Vladimir Lenin suffered a stroke in early 1923 and was basically debilitated. After the death of Lenin in 1924, Stalin and Trotsky both vied for control over the Bolshevik movement. And Trotsky had the better claim, but Stalin, being more ruthless, managed to take charge of the Central Committee. In 1924, Trotsky published The Lessons of October, in which he distinguished between objectively revolutionary situations and subjective failures of revolutionary leaders in such situations. One such plan he opposed was the taking of farmland from poor farmers who had suffered for centuries as serfs until the abolishment of serfdom by Tsar Alexander II in 1861. The landowner in those days did not own the serf, he owned the land. This contrasted with slavery in the USA where slaves were the disposable property of their masters. In Russia, the traditional relationship between lord and serf was based upon the land. It was believed, because he lived on his land, that the serf was bound to the noble lord. This system died out in Europe due to the Industrial Revolution and the Enlightenment, none of which happened in Imperial Russia, which remained a backwater nation. Trotsky, remembering his family's history as farmers, believed that once the nobility had been abolished, that those people who lived on the land should own it. Trotsky believed that peasants should be able to retain that property and simply pay the appropriate taxes. Stalin was not on board with that at all. Trotsky also knew that the Soviet Union's great abundance of natural resources could be converted into, into sustainable hard currency if the economic situation allowed for it, hence not having an economy in a vacuum. Stalin finally agreed on that. Stalin still believed that as long as the workers shared in the prosperity and the state could become wealthy as a result and there was no poverty, it did not matter if there was an international economic exchange. Trotsky in his writings basically stated where mistakes were made and who made them, and he made enemies as a result. He saw how those rising in power were not abiding by their own Marxist precepts, living far above the average citizen and with special privileges such as good food and fine houses. He openly complained about the hypocrisy, which angered a lot of those who were guilty, and they were in Stalin's camp. They were being perceived by Trotsky as the new aristocracy ruling over and exploiting the proletariat that Marx had warned about when he attacked capitalism. But Trotsky was still very popular with the people as well as the Red Army troops he led during the revolution, as well as during the Russian Civil War, being victorious in both conflicts. Trotsky had shared the cold, the hardship and dangers with them. He hungered when they did and led by example. None of the other Bolshevik leaders did that. They remained in safety and comfort. The main fact that Trotsky knew and mentioned was the fact that the Russian peasants were not naturally communists, something which Stalin could never admit, but he would force them into submission. Rather than using force and terror, Trotsky preached a globally acceptable socialist state, interactive economically, friendly to the people and workers, taking care of their needs, which would be a beacon to the world that all other nations would gravitate towards. However, Stalin had no interest in what the outside world thought and he proceeded to establish a minority dictatorship built on a rule of terror. He created an enemies list and it was growing. Trotsky was on it. Stalin, as Secretary General, cleaned out those whom he did not trust or could not control from the Politburo and he added three new full members, Vyacheslav Molotov, 
Clement Voroshilov and Mikhail Kalinin, all loyal Stalin supporters. These men supported Stalin's ruthless methods, which Trotsky opposed to include punishing some Russians, Ukrainians, and Uzbeks for resisting collectivization, and they helped to eliminate Trotskyites, those who supported Trotsky through loyalty. This began the creation of the first gulags as the world came to know them. As Stalin muscled Kerensky aside, he then expelled Trotsky from the Bolshevik party in 1927 and exiled him to Siberia in 1928. Stalin may have entertained the thought of killing him then, but there were millions of Russians, many armed Red Army soldiers, who would have taken exception to that. Trotsky was then quietly banished from the Soviet Union in 1929. After his exile, Leon Trotsky sought asylum in Mexico. He had learned of the great disasters in Ukraine from Stalin's enforced starvation policies called the Holodomor. It was Stalin's revenge for Ukrainians who resisted the confiscation of their lands as well as not accepting the Bolshevik line. The Holodomor was a famine launched in Ukraine during 1932 and 1933, when Stalin confiscated all the crops grown to sell on the open market for hard currency. The hardship, which lasted until possibly 1936, resulted in the death of around 5 million people and is considered a genocide. Now, this number does not include the additional estimated 5 million Ukrainians who were forcibly deported to gulags. Trotsky settled into a house in the Koyakan district of Mexico City in 1936, the same year that Stalin started his show trials. Trotsky began writing articles and books denouncing Stalin and his pogroms, the Great Purges, and he was still a target. This was when Stalin began the first of his purges, eliminating those who he felt opposed him or threatened his position, and Trotsky was sentenced to death in absentia. Stalin put out a contract on Trotsky, and he knew where he was, and in May 1940, men armed with machine guns attacked his house. The Soviets had recruited locals, including the Marxist-Leninist muralist David Alfaro Siqueiros. Pavel Sudapotov, deputy director of the Foreign Department of the NKVD, planned the attempted murder. In his memoirs, Sudapotov claimed that in March 1939, he had been taken by his chief Leventry Beria to see Stalin. Stalin told them that if Trotsky is finished, the threat will be eliminated, and that Stalin told him that Trotsky should be eliminated within a year. Luckily, Trotsky survived the incident, but a second assassination attempt took place some three months later. Nahum Eidingen, the former NKVD leader in Spain who had worked with Leventy Beria to assassinate senior Soviet officials, contacted Spanish communist Jaime Ramon Mercader del Rio, a, an NKVD operative. He moved to Mexico City and prepared. On August 20th, 1940, Ramon Mercador joined Eidingen and they planned the murder. Then Mercador stalked and ambushed Trotsky while he was in the study of his house and struck him in the head with an ice axe. Eidingen and Mercador's mother, Eustaquia Caridad Mercador, were waiting outside Trotsky's residence in separate getaway cars. But Mercador was tackled by Trotsky's bodyguards, and after he failed to emerge from the house, both accomplices left and fled the country. Mercador was arrested and Trotsky died the next day. Mercador, upon his arrest, claimed that his name was Jacques Mornard. In 1943, he was convicted of murder and spent 19 years and eight months in Palacio de la Cumberi prison on a 20-year sentence. Stalin presented Mercador's mother, Estaquia Caridad, with the Order of Lenin for her part in the operation. After his release from Mexican imprisonment in 1960, Mercador was awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union and the Order of Lenin by Nikita Khrushchev and Alexander Shelepin, the head of the KGB, and at various times he lived in Cuba, the Soviet Union, and Czechoslovakia. Mercador died in Havana, Cuba in 1978 of lung cancer and is buried under the name Ramon Ivanovich Lopez in Moscow's Concevo Cemetery. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please click like, subscribe, and share. Send us comments and show ideas, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.